Eton Moorfield Road School in Widnes. Ian's favourite player is Amosi Coloto, while Paul names Phil McKenzie as his favourite. Paul's hobbies include football and swimming, and Ian likes rugby, swimming and drawing. We hope both lads have a super day with us this afternoon. And the Bradford team take the field. Just a couple of weeks ago, the corresponding fixture in Yorkshire, a 16-16 draw. In similar conditions, the big Bradford pack took on the witness. Six, and indeed, held their own for quite a while through the game. Now run through the two sides for you this afternoon. Quite a few changes. Witness number one, Alan Tate, and a change at two, Rick Thackeray. Three, Andy Courier. Four, Darren Wright. And five, Martin of Fire. Number six is Barry Dowd. And seven, An Andy Sullivan. Eight, Joe Grimmer. Nine, Phil McKenzie. Ten, Derek Pike. Eleven, Kurt Sorensen. Twelve, Mike O'Neill. And thirteen, Paul Hume. Jonathan Davis is at fourteen, and David Hume at fifteen. The Bradford side, number one, will be Errol Johnson. Keith Mumby will miss his first game for two and a half years for Bradford. 155 consecutive appearances by Keith Mumby will miss his today game with an injury. Two, Roger Simpson. Three, Steve McGowan. Four, Ian Wilkinson. And five, Basil Aki. Six, John Pendlebury. And seven, Paul Harkin. Eight, Kelvin Skerritt. Nine, Brian Noble. Ten, John Hammer. Eleven, David Hobbs. Twelve, Carl Fairbank. And thirteen, Harry Pinner. 14 is Richie Francis and 15 Mark Wilson. The referee for this afternoon's match is Mr. Cross from Hessel and the touch judges are Mr. B. Walker with the pink flag and Mr. B. Norbury with the orange flag. Well, appalling conditions for the kickoff this afternoon. Driving rain blowing straight down the pitch towards the clubhouse. And in the first half, Witness will be playing from left to right. In a familiar white strip with black trim. Bradford Norman today will be playing in a chain strip of red shirts and white shorts. They will start the match. They'll start the match for Bradford. A kick into the witness 25. Held by Mike O'Neill. Witness will play the ball just outside their own 25. Kurt Sorensen, the witness captain. Very heavy underfoot this afternoon. Not conducive with running rugby league. But witness coped well to a point with the Bradford pack just a few weeks ago in similar conditions. Alan Tate. Long kick down four by Alan Tate. Well, that will set the tone for this afternoon. The ball could just bounce anywhere in these conditions. And Errol Johnson did very well at the second attempt. The tackle just outside his own 25 then. McGowan for Bradford. Played the ball just outside his own 25. Basilaki, the New Zealander, going from half back and doing very well, making 10 yards for his side. Now Harry Pinnett, next witness loose forward. Had a spell here with witness a couple of seasons ago. A fine ball handler, the next captain of Great Britain. John Penry playing in an unfamiliar possession for him and standoff getting his side away on this side but in the end crowded out on this near touch line good covering tackling from Andy Currier so it'll be a scrum down just inside the Bradford half of the field Andy Sullivan will put this ball in for witness on this near touch line to Barry Dowd on halfway Darren Wright comes into the line with some good covering tackling from two Bradford players and in fact robbing the ball from Darren Wright Ian Wilkinson ex-Halifax centre gets play up to halfway for Bradford as I say conditions probably would suit the big Bradford pack just a little bit more than the witness side Meanwhile, the referee catches Darren Wright in an offside position along with Martin Afire, and that will be a free kick to Bradford. Seven or eight yards inside the witness half of the field on that far side. Well, Bradford.
Watford not quite sure who was taking this free kick and in the end David Hobbs steps up and that ball squirms in field and it's taken by Alan Tate right on his own try line comes in centre field gets up to the halfway on the outside trying to get witness away finds Sullivan Rick Thackeray stepping inside doing very well in the end the Bradford cover brings down Rick Thackeray midway between halfway and the witness 25 now Sullivan Michael Neal trying to straighten the play up but a good tackle from Harry Pinner and Mr Cross evens the offside score up here with a free kick to witness Alan Tate will take this kick for witness then safely wants a touch on that far side 10 yards inside the Bradford half of the field McKenzie at half back now Paul you and now Derek Pike will return for him today Derek Pike a man at the top of his form in that front row for witness in recent weeks and probably had his best game since coming to witness in that Easter Monday clash at St Helens a superb game at number 10 for witness that day witness on meanwhile through Barry Dow make it over halfway fine support from Andy Courier Courier gets the ball away witness offloading the ball again here was good support from Witness taking play deep inside the Bradford half of the field warm applause from the crowd as Witness now begin to move the ball across field a long ball from Sullivan a short one to Tate in the line has Johnson to beat steps inside of him but the Bradford covered us very well to hold him up just 10 yards short good play by Witness but equally good tackling from Bradford so a good position here then for Witness 10 yards short of the Bradford post switch it to the right Paul Yu back inside to Courier Courier goes for the line and the first try of the afternoon for Witness through Andy Courier. That try started deep inside the Bradford half. Witness moved the ball along the line with quick hands. Found a gap for Alan Tate, who made 30 yards towards the Bradford line. Was held up 10 yards short, but in the end... just receiving some attention on halfway there he must have took a knock or something as he made that run through the centre of the defence but he seems okay the trainer now we seen to him and Andy Courier the second attempt will try to convert his own try safe enough say the linesman and witness move to a six point single lead after about six minutes of the first half Despite the pressure from Wigan and Castleford and Leeds, if you like, at the top of the first division, it will all count for nothing if Witness take those required six points from the remaining six games in Division 1. After 
this home game with Bradford this afternoon. Winners will have three games away in Yorkshire. We must travel to both Hull clubs and to Castleford before returning for the final league game with Wigan at Norton Park here at the end of the month. Joe Grimmer then takes Grimmer up to his own 25. The ball thrown back to Alan Tate. Kick downfield from Alan Tate. Errol Johnson staying very deep as he must do in these conditions. And this time, a kind bounce for him. Run straight at Martin Afire. But Afire is equal to him just outside the Bradford 25. And Johnson will play the ball. Now Roger Simpson, I was impressed with him in the corresponding game just a couple of weeks ago. And also, he had a very good game on that right wing. Kelvin Skerritt then. Obviously, I would think that Bradford will rely on their very big front row this afternoon in these conditions to try and burst away down the middle of the witness defence. Wilkinson is held up by some good covering from witness. Parking then, a kick downfield. But Andy Currier, or rather, Rick Thackeray takes that ball. The ball squirming from his grasp on halfway. And a chance here for Bradford to counter-attack. Now Simpson clear on that side because of fire coming, cover tackling, and a good tackle from the ever-dependable. Darren Wright brings him to ground. Meanwhile, a charge from John Hammer it takes play just outside the witness 25. A chance for Bradford to move the ball to the left. Harry Pinnett straightens the play up. But it's met by Sullivan and by Joe Grimmer. Parkin, now Pendlebury. A long pass. Wilkinson takes that ball. Tries to step inside of Andy Currier. But a good tackle from Andy Currier. Just inside the witness 25. Bradford still in possession then. Pendlebury in centre field. Now Pinner. Hobbs coming up. The ball goes to ground. And Pinner gets that loose ball. Play on to the referee. In fact, Pinner making another good 10 yards. Good charge from Pinner. Last tackle, says the referee. Now Harkin, trying to kick that ball to the corner. The referee says, that's a turnover. A kick ahead by Harkin. Bradford felt perhaps the witness player tried to take that ball, but no, says the referee. The turnover it was, and witness must bring this ball away. And 15 yards from their own line then, Derek White. Yet again, the referee catches a Bradford player offside in centre field. And that's a free kick to witness. The rain continuing to drive down here. The elements in witness favour in the first half. Nigel Grimmer, well met by three Bradford tacklers, ten yards inside the witness half of the field. Chance for witness to move the ball across field, Mike O'Neill. As I say, a very slippy ball this afternoon. Possibly not conducive to open rugby at all. Bit of a mix up there between the witness players. Trying to switch play, no support on the far side. Meanwhile, Alan Tate comes into the line, tries to step through a tackle. But a very good tackle indeed from Brian Noble, the Bradford hooker. Paul Young gets up to halfway. An unbelievable incident there. Boom. Gets up to halfway. And an unbelievable incident there. It looked as if David Hobbs took a swing at Paul Young, missed him, and in fact, hit Steve McGowan, he's on centre. And the trainer comes on after David Hobbs caught his own player. Well, that's a very rare incident. Scrum down right on halfway. Witness have the ball from that scrum, says the referee. So Kurt Sorensen trying to squeeze through, but a good tackle 
from Carl Furbank, but a chance here for witness. But again, the ball going to ground. As I said, absolutely atrocious for handling. The players cope with it very well indeed, just a fortnight ago at Odsall. Scrum collapses there, and Mr. Cross will tell both sets of forwards to bind again. And Harkin to put the ball in for Bradford. Bradford have it this time. Pendlebury, full back Johnson coming into the line. And an excellent cover tackle from his opposite number, Alan Tate, the present Great Britain full back. Back in the side this afternoon. Bazalaki then played in the centre for Bradford just a couple of weeks ago against Widnes. And Pendlebury, as I say, in an unfamiliar position for him at standoff. John Hammett gets up to halfway for Bradford. And now moving the ball to the right, Bradford. Oh, nice. The ball goes to ground, play on, says the referee. Now Joe Grimmer off that short ball. But he's met by Johnson with a good tackle. Witness then, half, midway between halfway and the Bradford 25. Derek Pike looking to offload the ball to a fire who came off that far wing, as he has done in recent weeks. The ball going to ground, and Bradford doing very well. Brian Noble, ex-Great Britain captain. And a good charge from John Hammett. Takes Bradford just over halfway into the witness, half of the field, in centre field. Chance for Bradford to move the ball to the right. Harkin. Well, again, the referee says that Derek Pike was in an offside position and has awarded Bradford a free kick in centre field. David Hobbs in to kick against this very strong wind and rain. Just about finds such on this near side. Now we attack to Bradford. Harry Pinner at first receiver. Now Harkin and now Hammett. But a good tackle from Joe Grimmett. Copy book tackling round the legs. Bradford swatch the ball again. Harry Pinner looking for a gap. In fact, finds Furbank races towards Alan Tate. Does well, but no support at all for the man. A superb break of a short ball from Harry Pinner. But when Furbank turned round, there was no support at all from his Bradford teammates. Now Johnson's in the line, just a yard short. Good position here from Bradford. A yard from the witness post then. Chance to move it to the right, Harkin again. Now Pinner, short ball for Pendlebury. Offloads again to Pinner. Pinner just lost his footing, but gets the ball out. Now Furbank drives at the witness post almost getting there and in the end four witness players bring him to ground right on the witness line <laughs> the referee decides there's some unfair play by the witness tacklers has awarded Bradford a free kick right on the witness line <laughs> easy enough for a kicker of the calibre of David Hobbs and with 15 minutes of the first half gone Bradford get their first points of the afternoon on the board and witness lead by six points to two it will be Andy Currier who will restart the game for witness then think that perhaps Bradford in that game at Odsall just a couple of weeks ago have given Widnes their hardest league fixture for the last few months. The Widnes players felt in the end that it was a point gained rather than a point lost. Indeed the Bradford supporters on that day really felt that the side had done enough to take the two points. Nonetheless, a point apiece it was and they return today to do battle. Kelvin Skerritt then, a drive from Bradford, midway between halfway and his own 25, brought to ground by Joe Grimmett. The ball thrown back to Hobbs, kick downfield from him. Martin Afire gets across on his own 25, but in fact leaves it to Alan Tate. Tate will have a fire inside if he needs him. There's some good tackling by McGowan and by John Pendlebury. Bring down Alan Tate. Sullivan from halfback. Good play from him, allowing his forwards to get organised behind him. Barry Dowd. Oh, 
Oh, long kick from Barry down towards that corner. The ball will hold up just over the Bradford line. Errol Johnson gets across there, but is faced by five witness tacklers. He races head on towards Darren Wright, and nobody in the league gets past Darren Wright. He could have picked anyone else but him. Good tackle from Wright. Bradford then trapped just inside their own 25. The pitch beginning to get waterlogged around that area, around the Bradford 25. Harry Pear, held up by O'Neill and Joe Grimmer. Bradford Dent moving the ball to the left. Skerritt, short ball from Pendlebury. The witness will quick to get to him here. A good tackle from Paul Yu. Wilkinson's at half back now. Hobbs will kick it downfield again. But Rick Thackeray using his feet to control that ball, doing very well, and will run in field. Met by the two Bradford prop forwards, Skerritt and Hammer. And they push him back five or six yards. But Thackeray was probably giving away 20 stones there to those two men. Lost 10 yards. Now Derek Pike on that far side for witness. In fact, keeping the ball alive, Barry Dowd. Still can't force a way through. Good tackling from Bradford here. Not allowing Widness to get into the stride. Sullivan then. The referee again, very keen on the offside this afternoon. That's about four or five times that he's caught either side in an offside position. And Andy Currier, or rather may leave it to Alan Tate. Widness have a free kick just inside their own half of the field. Alan Tate safely into touch on this near side. And that takes play midway between halfway and the Bradford 25. Mackenzie then, now Paul Hume, and now Joe Grimmer. So Furbank and Hammer bringing to ground just outside the Bradford 25 in centre field. Paul Hume trying to switch play. He does so to Pike. Pike again to Michael Neal. On Derek Pike on this right hand side, a short ball to Barry Dowd. He steps through a tackle and inside finds Michael Neal in support and Widner score the second try of the afternoon. Patiently working a move inside the Bradford 25. In the end, the switch play from Derek Pike found Barry Dowd on the short ball. He side with speed merchants as everybody knows in rugby league but having said that when conditions need the experienced forwards to slow the game down and keep it tight the likes of Derek Pike, Joe Grimmer, Mike O'Neill and Kurt Sorensen have all the experience in the world to adapt yeah. to these appalling conditions so Andy Currier tags on that conversion from in front of the post and as I say with about 21 minutes gone of the first half Witness moving to a 12 points to 2 lead. David Hobbs then restarts the game. And Derek Pike dropping on a ball and finding Kurt Sorensen with a good pass from the floor. Excellent play from Derek Pike. Now McKenzie finds Sullivan. Paul Young. Good tackling again from Bradford. Not allowing the youngster to get into his stride at all there. Barry Dowd. Down towards the Bradford 25, Errol Johnson, sensibly using his feet to control the ball initially. And he's tackled just outside his own 25. Now Simpson. 
wingman coming inside to allow his forwards to reorganise themselves. Fairbank. Possibly looking like the more dangerous Bradford forward in the early part of the game. But well, here's a good drive here. Superb run from Skerritt. Did well. Looked outside, but no support. Excellent run. Beat two or three witness players there to take play into the witness half of the field. Pendlebury. Now McGowan. All got a little bit too tight for Bradford here on this near touch line. Wilkinson's at half back. Pendlebury. And up and under from Pendlebury. Bit of a mix up between Sullivan and Tate. But play on, says the referee. Now Tate doing very well. Little kick ahead from Alan Tate. He will get to the ball first. Kicks it past Johnson. It's a chase for the line. Alan Tate getting up to Johnson. In the end, Johnson doing very well under pressure from Alan Tate. Fair play to the young fullback there. He had to turn and chase that kick forward by Alan Tate. And at the end did the sensible thing and kicked that ball into the dead ball area. More excitement from the home crowd. I think we'll see the draft now. Even more so, the young fullback did very well because he's limping badly there from an injury. It picks up a little area. In the meantime, Andy Currier getting that ball just inside the Bradford 25 on this near side. As I say, it's going to be a substitution for Bradford any time now. The young fullback took a bad knock on the ankle and did very well to save that. He's lying there. And Alan Tate chased that kick through. Meanwhile, witness. Moving the ball across field, Sullivan, short ball to Sorensen, now to Tate in the line. The referee saying that it was a knock-on, as Witness tried to get that ball away to Darren Wright. And the referee says that it will be a scrum down inside the Bradford 25 on that far side of the field. Tushin for Bradford then, the young full back having to go off in that knock. And number 14, Richard Francis comes on, takes his position on the right wing, and Roger, Roger Simpson will take up the full back position for Bradford. Pendlebury trying to bring Bradford away, deep inside his own 25. Now Pinner. Very difficult indeed for the side playing against this wind and rain in the first half, that being Bradford, to make any sort of ground at all. But they're doing very well here, getting play up towards the witness 25. Hobbs on that blind side, McGowan. Francis does very well, and Bradford coming out to the very well indeed. Good run from the young substitute. McGowan did well to get him away. Now Harkin, a kick downfield by Harkin. It comes in field and Alan Tate will take that 10 yards from his own line. Martin Afire coming in field, offloads to Afire. Witness just outside their own 25, a chance to move the ball to the left here. Switching from Barry Dowd. Trying to keep the ball alive. And in the end, that tackle from Skerritt, halting that witness move. Derek Pike to Phil McKenzie. But a half tackle from Bayern Noble, it needed to be. The ball thrown back to Alan Tate then. And again, Simpson allowing that ball to go dead. Tap out to Bradford on their own 25. Brian Noble. Now Aki coming in from the wing. Pinner. Tackle by Sorensen. Bradford using their big strong forwards here to try and force a way through the centre of the witness defence having no luck with that at all so far Hobbs trying to get that ball downfield Martin Afire will have to get back quickly which he does, has Alan Tate on the inside 
and in fact offloads to Sullivan he does very well to take that ball around his ankles did well witness then in position 10 yards inside their own half of the field With that ball going to ground Wilkinson a chance to counter attack here for Bradford in centre field brought down in the end by Joe Grimmett Mike O'Neill and Andy Sullivan just outside the witness 25 then Noble at half back now Harkey Bradford moving the ball to the right Hobbs a good tackle from Kurt Sorensen in fact the ball popping out of the grasp of David Hobbs and it will be a scrum down right on the witness 25 Andy Sullivan then Sullivan has impressed everybody with his appearance as a substitute this up, uh, during the last few weeks for witness and indeed has probably earned that appearance this afternoon as a deputy for David Young Bradford then in possession just inside the witness 25 charge from Hammer Mike O'Neill and from McKenzie hold him up chance of Bradford to move the ball across field here scare it but really as well as all the tries that witness have scored this season people sometimes seem to forget that they've got the meanest defense in the first division as well witness are only leaking about 12 or 13 points at most per game this season they also have the best defense in the league but that's a scrum down midway between the witness 25 and the long line and they have it through Sullivan now Barry Dow Offload to Alan Tate, who does very well. Two against two here, passes it inside to Wright. But in the end, Simpson gets that ball for Bradford, steps out of one tackle. Well, a chance there for Witness. Choosing the option to move the ball inside, but the ball just going to ground. And that leaves Bradford back in possession, just inside the Witness half of the field. Lazalaki, the New Zealander. Now Noble then for Bradford. Coming up to the half hour of the first half gone. Witness the lead by 12 points to two. The Skerritt drives at Derek Pike and Andy Currier. On this near touchline, just outside the Witness 25. John Pendlebury. Now Pinner. And Carl Furbank. Last tackle, says the referee for Bradford here. Harkin will kick towards the corner. And it's a good kick from Harkin. That's an excellent kick from Harkin. In touch, five yards from the witness line. And it seems unlikely that this rain will give over at all this afternoon. Absolutely persistent rain throughout the first half so far. Witness have the ball then to Andy Sullivan, doing very well. Coming in centre field, looks inside, Martin of fire. A good cover tackling from Bradford. Martin Afire trying to off load that ball. In fact, Witness retrieving the ball after it touched the Bradford man. Chance for Witness still here. A long pass. Rick Thackeray does well to take it. But the referee quite rightly says that in the end, Rick Thackeray knocked that ball forward and it will be a scrum down on this side of the field. Just for a second, it looked as if Martin Afire had found a gap in field there in the Bradford defence. But his efforts to offload the ball to the supporting player, the ball went to ground. Harkin then gets this ball out for Bradford. Free kick, says the referee. The witness player is not retiring and the court in an offside position. Harkin will kick this ball into touch on this near side for Bradford. for Bradford, Hammer charges at the witness line, in fact almost getting through but a good tackle from Michael Neal and by Derek Pike, Bradford are just eight yards short here, Harkin, trying to get the ball out to McGowan, he's just a guess, and a good try for Bradford, good pressure there on the witness line and in the end the ball squeezed out, to the centre, Steve McGowan.
Dobbs on 99 goals at present this season. And a very good kick indeed takes him to a century of goals. David Hobbs, ex Oldham, and Great Britain forward, a very reliable kicker indeed. And that's showing with his 100th goal this afternoon for Bradford. And that again closes the gap to four points. Just about six or seven minutes left of the first half. Witness 12, Bradford 8. Andy Curry then restarts the game for Witness. McGowan really had no chance with that ball. He skidded off the wet surf at about 90 miles an hour, then he really couldn't control that ball. And that would be a dropout for Bradford underneath their own post. David Hobbs then, along the floor, makes about 35 yards. Paul Young takes it for witness. Pendleby's there, with help from Wilkinson. Managed to push him back two or three yards. Barry Dowd, Derek Pike. Derek Pike trying to keep the ball alive, as he always does, and does well. Almost always available from Derek Pike to any supporting player on either side. Kurt Sorensen here with a drive towards the Bradford 25. But a good tackle from Pinner on Sorensen. Witness then moving the ball inside. Sullivan, a long pass to Alan Tate who comes into the line. Half breaks through, tries to find Joe Grimmer. But a counter attack here from Bradford. That was a good tackle from Wilkinson on Alan Tate. Great Britain man came into the line, looked as if he was going to break through that Bradford defence, but an excellent tackle from the left centre. And find Bradford now with the ball on halfway. Noble, superb break from halfback. In fact, pushes aside Alan Tate. Good run that from the hooker. That was a superb run, 25 yards from Noble. Now setting up a position here for Bradford. Oh, surely I tackle that on Pendlebury. The referee didn't see that tackle. play on. Just inside the witness 25, Hobbs on the blind side, looking for Skerritt. Skerritt, some pressure here again then from Bradford. They've had a good spell for five or six minutes here. Harkin, first receiver, and up and under from Harkin. And that's exactly what it is. But in the end, Sullivan gets that ball for witness. So there was danger again there for witness as the first half comes to a close with about three or four minutes left. It's been dour stuff from both sides, and that was always going to be when the conditions presented themselves. Sorensen getting Courier away. But again, good cover tackling from Bradford. The ball going loose. And Carl Furbank doing very well to drop on that ball for Bradford. Looks for support. Finds it from McGowan. Mike O'Neill's there. The match just coming to life a little bit here. With this pressure from Bradford. Harry Pinner. He gets the ball away well to Harkin. But Joe Grimmel was alive to that situation. Bradford then have had their shirt. A possession in this first half. And against this very strong driving rain, have done very well to keep the score down to 12 points to 8. In fact, as the first half, as I say, comes to a close, it's from Bradford Skerritt. that are doing the attacking. Excellent kick forward from Skerritt. Takes play midway between half the Witness 25 and the Witness try line on that far side. And that will be a scrum down. So a good 10 or 15 minutes here from Bradford. The ball comes out to Bradford, Harkin to Pendlebury. McGowan did very well to take that ball. He did very well indeed, and offload to Pendlebury again. The danger here again for Witness. Bradford doing very well. The referee saying that John Pendlebury knocked the ball forward. And a bit of frustration there from John Pendlebury. Really, when his side had pressure on the witness line. Kind of played with Johnny Pendlebury, didn't show him off from too often. 
Margaret Coventry has given witness at a penalty, just in front of their own post. But an excellent kick from Alan Tate just goes over the head of Basil Aki on this near touch line. And Mackenzie then with two minutes left of the first half. Now Derek Pike trying to get up to halfway. Held by Skerritt and by Hammer. Now Grimmer. Far banked as well. But Widnes make it just inside the Bradford half of the field in centre field then. Mackenzie's at half back. The ball thrown back to Alan Tate again. Kick forward from Tate. And that goes into touch on this near side. Just a couple of feet from the Bradford corner flag. So perhaps a last chance for witness here. The trainer coming on. A bit of attention for Joe Grimmer back here. I think he took a knock in that drive into the Bradford half of the field. Mackenzie must be very upset. Ryan Noble already taken two against the head. They're great yards in the line. Bradford have the ball then, but the ball has gone loose. And offside, says the referee. And in fact, a bit of indiscipline again from the Bradford players, losing another 10 yards. So here is a last chance for witness then. They have a free kick, just a yard from the Bradford line. Yes, well. Witness have elected to kick it goal through Andy Currier. 12 points to 8 at the moment. Half time almost here. Probably a last chance of the half for Witness to get onto the scoreboard. Andy Currier then, out on this right-hand side, on the 25. Very difficult kick indeed in these conditions. Any kick at goal is. Treacherous on the foot. Andy Currier then. Just wide of the upright. So Bradford getting away with that then, on their own line. Witness choosing to go for goal and not picking up the points. If anything, the rain coming down harder as the first half draws to a close. And that dropout finds Andy Currier. Offloads the ball. Witness keeping the ball alive here. Derek Pike shrugs off one tackle. But in the end, the Bradford cover get to him. Just inside the Bradford half of the field then. Mackenzie's at half-back. Finds Paul Young. Now Sullivan. Mike O'Neill. But a good tackle from Harry Pinner. O'Neill plays the ball to himself. Makes another five or six yards. Still going, Mike O'Neill. In his testimonial year here at Witness. A very popular second row man indeed. Derek Pike. Trying to kick that ball forward, but it's charged down by Noble. Noble and Purcell. Curry will have to get back. Has Alan Tate on the inside. Who in turn has Sorensen with him. Sorensen straightening play up for Witness here. Kurt Sorensen doing very well. Driving over halfway. A typical charge from Kurt Sorensen there. And the Witness players and the fans seem to think there was a trip involved here. Barry Dowd, meanwhile. Well done, no more action in the first half. The Hooter goes. A very dour contest indeed. Not much chance of any open football at all this afternoon in these conditions. And Bradford doing very well indeed against a very strong wind and rain to keep the score to half time at Witness 12, Bradford 8. Welcome back to the second half of this first division fixture between Witness and Bradford Northern. The first half on your left, a witness led by 12 points to 8 in absolutely appalling conditions and straight away a substitution for witness at half time. Jonathan Davis is on the field for witness. No number on the back of his jersey. And David Hume joins him as well. So a double substitution at half time for witness. It would appear that perhaps Barry Dowd has left the field. 
along with you know, Andy Sullivan still out on the field. I just can't quite make out. I hit him out on my fat, but he down still on the field. So I think Darren Wright's left the field. Standby, standby. Signs changing jerseys for this second half. A very heavy pitch. Now the players can be made out for the first 10 or 12 minutes. So Jonathan Davis restarts the game for witness. Simpson takes that ball on his own line. Met by Sorensen and O'Neill. Pushing back a yard. This game very much in the balance. Bradford, if you like, having the last 10 minutes. Pressure on the witness line and have the elements in their favour in the second half. So Witness must keep the ball down in the Bradford half of the field for the second half. If they're to take the two points, that will go a long way to winning the championship for a second successive season. But a good kick downfield for Bradford there. Taking play midway between halfway and the Witness 25. Sullivan put this ball in for witness and the referee Jonathan Davis has gone to stand off but the referee saying that Harry Pinner was offside and has given witness a free kick Jonathan Davis then will take this free kick for witness on this near touch line safely into touch here for witness Phil McKenzie then just inside the Bradford half of the field witness working to move with the three forwards here Mike O'Neill comes on the short ball, but Bradford will wise to that. And in fact, lose a yard or two from that play the ball. Sullivan. Witness held up then 10 yards inside their own half of the field, not making any headway at all. David Hume. A long kick from David Hume to that far side. Simpson will get to it, just a yard from the touchline. Tries to come inside of Andy Courier, does so. The ball going loose. And a knock-on, says the referee. Simpson doing very well for Bradford there. Taking play outside of his own 25. Referee not happy with the scrummage. Sullivan puts the ball in for witness. Now the ball's out to Davis. Looking for a short ball to Alan Tate in the line. But Pendlebury with a good tackle on the Great Britain fullback. Davis to Sullivan then. Now to David Young. To his brother Paul. But an excellent tackle from Harry Pinner. Holding witness up. Now David Young. Moving to the right through Sorensen. Breaks one tackle. And he's tackled just inside the Bradford 25. A chance here for Witness then, early in the second half. Missing out Derek Pike. Now Jonathan Davis. Can't find a gap though. David Young from half back. Good tackling from Bradford on their own 25 here. Not allowing Witness to move anywhere near the line here. Switch play by Pike. Tries to offload the ball. Play on, says the referee. Last tackle. Witness moving the ball to the right. Courier kicks it towards the corner, but it's too long. And that will be a 25-yard tap for Bradford. Well, to be honest with you, Witness seems to lack a few ideas there with that six tackles on the Bradford 25. In the end, move nowhere. Bradford move it out through Hammer. Now Hobbs, but a good tackle by Dowd on this near touch line. Skerritt runs into O'Neill. Bradford edging their way downfield though towards halfway. Moving the ball now to the left, pin a short ball to Fairbank. He gets through a half tackle and does well. Takes play over the halfway. 
So some encouragement here for Bradford early in the second half. Parking, a long kick from him. Excellent kick. Makes good ground into the witness 25. That was a superb kick from Harkin. And the pressure now down on the witness line. Witness made quite a few changes for this afternoon's game. Perhaps thinking that there were two points here for the taking. But Bradford to now are having none of that. And they're well in contention in this game. Just 12 points to eight witness lead. With about five minutes of the second half gone. Yes, that's four against ahead now from Brian Noble. Surely making these world rankings where the Kansas are moving the fast. Outplaying the lot slower. It's just four to five against ahead. And today, once again, dominating the scrum, Dan dominating the lose. Free kick then to Bradford. Harkin kicks that ball into touch. Harkin taking the ball back. Take the tap for Bradford. Now Hammer charges at the witness defence, but is held up on Michael Neal and by Derek Pike. But pressure here again from Bradford. Pinner. Good tackle from Paul Yu and Mackenzie. But Bradford are just five yards short of the witness post here. Moving the ball to the right. Hammer. Couldn't find a way through, switched it back. No support there for Bradford, but a chance here. Harkin, the ball's still alive, and a chance for Furbank here. He scores a try for Bradford. Great try from Cal Furbank, number 18, number 18. So that pressure then, early in the second half from Bradford, paying off with a good try from Carl Furbank. take a lead then with half an hour of this fixture left 14 points to 12 and with Leeds playing at Wilder School against Warrington this afternoon and Castleford at home to Wigan that will give those fans on those grounds encouragement if they see this score flash to them Bradford value if you like then for a 14 points to 12 lead with a half an hour left Jonathan Davis Kicks it towards the Bradford post. Simpson takes that ball. Tackled by Sorensen and by Mike O'Neill. Noble. Leon says the referee. The ball slipping from Skerritt's grasp. The referee said that went backwards. Pinner, short ball to Hammer. Bradford held up on their own 25 here. Now Hobbs with a kick downfield. Alan Tate takes that very well inside his own half on the full. And gets up to halfway. Witness will have to settle play down here while the forwards get reorganised. David Yu, now Andy Sullivan. To be honest with you, Witness are getting sucked into the trap here. Bradford playing one man rugby and Witness taking them on when really that is not Witness's style. Although, as I said earlier in the game, conditions do not suit open rugby. Witness really must throw the ball around. Derek Pike, good charge from him, looks for support. And indeed offloads the ball to Mike O'Neill, who's 30 yards short, runs at the fullback. Trying to keep the ball alive for Witness and a chance here for Witness. Derek Pike and Mike O'Neill working a good position for the home side. David Yuma, halfback, long pass for Sorensen and a short ball to Andy Courier, but a good half tackle. And Witness are held up just five yards short. Well, some encouragement from the home fans there. Witness moving the ball a bit and in the end, 
Just some good cover tackling from Bradford. Stopped what looked like a witness try on that far side of the field. Tap out to Bradford then. Skerritt. Favourite player. At Bradford. Hobbs. Now to McGowan. Try scorer. Now gets a young substitute away down this right hand side. Trying to step inside of Alan Tate, but a superb half tackle by the Great Britain man brings him down with help from some cover from Phil McKenzie. But Bradford then back on the attack on the witness 25. Pendlebury a chance here for Bradford. A long ball. It's a good ball. He takes it, but only just. And in the end, Basil Aki is tackled by Kurt Sorensen on the witness 25 on that far touchline. Simpson in the line for Bradford. Offloads the ball. Witness drop on that loose ball then. And the home fans trying to get behind Witness here. In the hope that the home side can raise the game. To look for these two precious points they need in a quest to win a second successive championship trophy. Derek Pike. Now Kurt Sorensen. Jonathan Davis. Trying to kick over the Bradford defence. Play on, says the referee. not happy with that decision saying that the witness player was in an offside position and that's left Bradford with the free kick midway between halfway and the witness 25 with him. David Hobbs then has a chance to push Bradford further ahead with about 25 minutes of this game left a supporting witness player of course in an offside position will leave David Hobbs with a chance to push the Yorkshire side further ahead. That looks good enough from here. Excellent kick from David Hobbs. Pushes Bradford into a 16 points to 12 lead. Well, the fans at Norton Park this season have been treated to some spectacular rugby league. The tries the lower by a very speedy rugby league side in need. But never more have they needed to get behind their side than this afternoon now in the last quarter of this game. Witness need to be lifted if they're to turn round this scoreline. Azaleki has that ball for Bradford. Makes it up to his own 25. The ball comes out. Knock on, says the referee. A test of character indeed here for Witness now. They need to turn round. Black and Hubble take a scoreline for her in atrocious conditions against a very, very big Bradford pack indeed. Meanwhile, Pendlebury, now Wilkinson, trying to bring the ball wide, but is tackled by a fire and by Barry Dowd. Now McGowan, the try scorer. Pinner and Pendlebury. Fairbank to Aki. Ten yards inside the Bradford half of the field length. Hark in with a kick downfield. David Hume saying very well to take that ball. So witness half possession then, just seven or eight yards inside their own half of the field on that far side. Andy Sullivan, the crowd getting behind witness, they must move the ball to the left. Barry Dowd, losing his footing. Jonathan Davis comes into the line, the cover's right there. Ten yards inside the Bradford half of the field then, witness with a chance to move the ball across field again. Andy Sullivan, Derek Pike. No support for Derek Pike. Good tackling from Bradford here. Sorensen finding David Yu. Still charging forward. That's better from Witness now. Sullivan misses out Pike. Finds Alan Tate who has to switch it back to Mike O'Neill. Sorensen having to go wide. Wilkinson and Furban hold him up. The Rass tackle says the referee. 
match here. Davis. Jonathan Davis then. Kick towards the Bradford 25, and Aki does well. And he's tackled just inside his own 25. Wilkinson to Simpson. Allowing his forwards to get back. Skerritt offloads to Wilkinson. He steps inside and keeps the ball alive for Bradford. Now Harkin. Good tackle that time from Courier though. Right on the Bradford 25. Hobbs will kick this ball forward. It's a good kick. The ball stays inside just on the witness 25. Picked up by a fire. Faced by four players. No way through for a fire here. Great play from Bradford. So pressure again from Bradford. Wouldn't have the ball though through Alan Tate. Some good cover tackling from John Pendlebury. The game coming alive for Witness here now. Derek Pike held up again by some good Bradford tackling. Witness are getting involved down the middle again. And really, the match winners are on the outside. Mike O'Neill switches it back inside to Sullivan. Five yards from halfway. Last tackle, says the referee. The ball thrown back to Jonathan Davis. It's a long kick, well inside the Bradford 25. In fact, getting down towards the Bradford line. Simpson picks that ball up. Playing very deep, the fullback, sensibly so. Now Aki. From half back, drives into the witness tacklers. Bradford have their tails up as it were in this last five or six minutes playing with some confidence now kick downfield from Harkin Rick Thackeray will have to get back on his own 25 does so has Tate on the inside with him brings play inside offloads to Alan Tate comes across field Alan Tate a long ball to a fire but there's no way through here for the wingman has to step inside finds Dow now Witness have a chance of moving the ball on that far side Andy Sullivan but a good tackle by Brian Noble that was a superb tackle but offside says the referee just about 20 minutes left then of this game and really Witness needs to wind the speed of this game up even with five or six changes this afternoon witness should have the speed to win this game if they move it out to the flanks Mike O'Neill just outside the Bradford 25 then in centre field Mackenzie Paul Young switches play David Hume his brother comes onto that ball what a good tackle from Hammer Witness make no more yardage. Paul you. Witness being halted by half tackles here from Bradford, but the defence doing very well. Sorensen. Free kick, says with the referee. Offside by the Bradford man. Not allowed to do that this season. And Jonathan Davis is electing to kick for goal. About 19 minutes of this game left. We must really need to wind this game up. The pace is suiting Bradford at the moment. They're coping much better with the conditions. Playing the familiar one-man rugby. believing that the Bradford players are not 10 yards back from that ball Jonathan Davis then but he misses that penalty yeah, 
consultation here between the referee and the linesman as to where the Bradford man caught that ball. And the referee deciding that that will be a drop out for Bradford. A bit of arguments as to whether the Bradford man caught the ball in his dead ball area. That's what the referee said he did. So on halfway, Mike O'Neill will have to charge back at the Bradford defence, which he does. Hal Furbank and Skerritt. Scrum down then. Bradford have the ball. Midway between halfway and their own 25. Now Wilkinson coming back inside. A good tackle from Jonathan Davis, that was on Wilkinson. The ball going loose, Andy Courier offloads it to David Yoon. Yoon going for the corner, finds Rick Thackeray in support. No a chance for witness here. The crowd getting behind the home side. Ten yards from the Bradford line. Sullivan. Witness moving the ball, but a good tackle. Excellent tackle by Hobbs, stopping Witness with a four-man overlap on this side. Mike O'Neill plays the ball. Derek Pike. Ball to Sullivan. David Hume in support, but a good tackle from Thackey. Bradford tackling superbly here. Not allowing Witness to move the ball to the flanks. Short ball to Kurt Sorensen. The ball going down. The ball going loose. And Harkin has that ball ten yards from the Bradford post. So chance is going begging if you like for witness here. The clock shows about 15 minutes of this game left. Still, witness 12, Bradford 16. 16 points of gold in Bradford's favour. 15 minutes remaining. Hammer. It doesn't matter whatever the result of this game this afternoon, there is no question that Bradford have given witness two of the hardest games of the season in the Stonesbitter Championship. 16-16 draw four nights ago, and at present Bradford leading 16 points to 12. Long kick downfield by Bradford. Alan Tate takes that ball on his own 25, he's faced by Pinner. Has to try and run wide, finds Thackeray, who comes back inside. But again, the Bradford defence is equal to that. Bradford playing exactly to the conditions here this afternoon. Phil McKenzie. Good tackle from Noble. Sullivan. Finds David Hume in support. But there's just no way through down the middle here. Sorensen. Pushes off one or two tackles, tries to get the ball away. And Bradford had that loose ball right on halfway. Be careful, only got for this one. There's no question that any sport that the conditions are a good level at, mud is a good level at to any sort of ball game, and that's showing this afternoon. Bradford looked very much the equal to witness in these conditions. Bradford then moving the ball to the left. Wilkinson, brought down by Courier, last tackle says the referee. Parking will kick this forward for Bradford again. And that's just a yard short. Excellent kick, or rather 10 yards. Chance here for Bradford again then. Scrum down 10 yards from the witness line, out on that far touch line. Chance here for Bradford then. Just about 12 minutes left of the second half. Pendleby plays the ball. Chance here for Bradford. A long pass from Pinner. McGowan throws it out to the winger. Yet is there. Have they given it? Good try. Super tackle. Bradford has 
scored another try both and it now becomes an uphill struggle indeed for witness witness 10 points down with about 10 minutes left so really witness must call upon all the character here if they're to turn this result around Harry Pinner Defeat by Wakefield in midweek. Bradford then on their own 25 in centre field. Brian Noble from halfback. Brian Noble. What a courageous leader. Nobody. Also an excellent game. Obviously, Bradford, as they always do, will keep it very tight here in the last 10 minutes. There's no way that they'll throw the ball about. And a kick downfield from Hobbs. Alan Tate takes this deep in his own 25. So this could be a very severe dent indeed to witnesses hopes of winning the championship. Obviously, still all is not lost. But they really do look as if they're struggling here this afternoon. Simpson then for Bradford. Takes play deep inside the witness half. Bradford playing with some confidence here. Wilkinson. Bradford really on top, if you like, in this last 10 to 15 minutes. The forwards have certainly got the better of the witness pack. And setting up runs for the backs on the outside. Just outside the witness, 25 then. Carl Fairbank on the bench. Right on the witness, 25 then. Bradford still in possession. Parking will be at half back. Domain to kick. Find Skerritt on the blind side. Seven minutes left then. Still witness 12. Bradford 22. And when they won the championship last year, Witness had a severe hiccup on the run-in, losing to bottom of the table. Swinton here at Lawn Park. And that looks as if it could perhaps happen again. And again, free kick to Witness, and Bradford lose another 10 yards. A bit of indiscipline again. So Jonathan Davis then moves that ball up towards halfway. The last chance for Witness then to try and get something going here. Kurt Sorensen. Bradford would have appeared to have done most of the spread work in the first half against the elements, keeping that score down to 12 points to 8. And in fact, Witness have failed to add any further score to the half-time score. David Yu, Andy Courier. Looking for Rick Thackeray, he has to step inside, a long ball from him. Finds Alan Tate. No way through again down the middle for Witness. And you would wonder whether this 
a very severe fixture list for witness in the last couple of weeks is now beginning to tell on some players they've had to play 10 of the remaining games in the last three weeks Martin Afaya first chance for him a ball to Jonathan Davis on the touchline but a half tackle from David Hobbs and Jonathan Davis is taken out on this near touchline Despite the conditions, everybody knows that Witness have pace on the flanks, and really, Witness must really throw this ball around. It's their only chance now in this game. The match winners are all out on the flanks. And this afternoon, they've chosen to take Bradford on, albeit that the conditions have not allowed anything else, really. And have found themselves second best. Free kick again for Witness then. Five or six minutes left. Showing out Mark for coming so far. Jonathan Davis. Kick this ball into touch for witness on this near touch line. Gains another 10 or 15 yards for witness. Inside the Bradford 25 then. The home crowd getting behind witness. Derek Pike holds up play. Witness must move the ball along the line here. Kurt Sorensen charges at the post. Ten yards short witness here. Moving it back to the left, Paul Yu. Mike O'Neill comes on the long ball. Moves it back inside to Paul Yu. He charges for the corner, but he's held up again. Good tackling from Bradford here. Witness must move the ball across field, which they do. Across field, David Yu. Short ball to Andy Currier, who's come inside. For a good tackle. Excellent tackling from Bradford again. You can't take anything away from the Bradford defence this afternoon. Anything that Witness has thrown at them, the Bradford have done very well. Just outside the Bradford 25 then. Bradford will use up all the tackles before kicking the ball downfield. Of that you can be sure. Great lead there from the skipper. Put in a fine example. Another big crowd turned out at Norton Park this afternoon. Hoping to see Witness take two important points in their quest for the championship. But I'm afraid the elements have gone against them. Plus some good honest to goodness would be from Bradford. What a kick from David Hobbs, will it roll? A long kick from David Hobbs, deep inside the Witness 25. Going to Alan Tate getting back to that ball. Has to come inside. Offloads to David Yu. Makes it over to the 25. The minutes ticking away now for Witness. Just five minutes left. Derek Pike switching play to Alan Tate. Witness persisting to try and find a gap up the middle, and really, that isn't the way. Not against this side. Andy Sullivan. Mike O'Neill. O'Neill, oh, bursting the tackle. Looking for a fire on the outside. Offside, Yes, he's given it. The decision by the referee. Offside, says the referee. Mike O'Neill trying to get Martin a fire away down that touchline. So fair play to Bradford. 22 points to 12 with about four minutes left of this game. Skerritt then bringing Bradford forward towards the witness 25 in centre field. Now Hammer. Good run from him. Makes another good 15 yards in that mud there. Noble from half back. Bradford then having a last charge at the witness line. These conditions. Still moving the ball, Bradford here to the right. The ball's loose on the floor. Jonathan Davis kicking that ball forward. But the Bradford defence will get to that. But the ball's still loose. Trying to kick the ball forward. And the ball goes to Andy Courier. Has Jonathan Davis on his outside. He has Courier. Courier must go with the Bradford cover. Jonathan Davis inside. Hot on fire. The ball goes loose. And Bradford drop on that loose ball. Well, nothing at all going right for Witness here this afternoon. That late 
attack from Witness, moving the ball from one touch line to the other. Witness is sneaking and flying. The fire dropping that final pass. Ten yards from the Bradford line. Done very well for Bradford this afternoon, stepping out of another tackle and taking play up towards halfway. I just like to know what this fella nobody knows, but certainly not finding favour with Riley at the moment. Aki with the ball, basically then still up to halfway for Bradford. Fifth and final tackle. A minute ticking away here. Absolutely atrocious conditions this game has been played in. Well, that can take nothing away whatsoever from Bradford this afternoon. They've adapted themselves well. And a full value for 22 points to 12 lead. Andy Sullivan's at halfback. Long ball to Derek Pike. No support for Pike, though. The team directs the ideas at the moment. The ball goes to the ground. Bayon says the referee, that ball going backwards from that pass from Derek Pike. Phil McKenzie's at halfback. Finds David Young. His brother Paul. Just up to the witness 25. Just a minute or so left of this game then. A severe jolt indeed to witness his hopes of winning the championship for a second successive season. There's still games left in which they can quite easily do that. But having said that, looking at the five remaining games before today this possibly looked like one of the easier games and it hasn't turned out to be that at all Bradford have the ball again then but the referee says no get down again The last attack from them, maybe. The clock showing 4:30. The Hooter about to go any time. It's Bradford through. Pinner thrown out to Francis. But a knock on says the referee. And that will be a scrum down just on the witness 25 on this near touchline. So witness will not gain the two points they were looking for. Instead, they must psych themselves up for the trip to Hull in midweek. Witness has the ball then on their own 25 through Andy Sullivan. But again, relentless tackling from the Yorkshire side have not allowed Witness to get into the stride at all this afternoon. Derek Pike offloads the ball again to Sullivan. Who in turn finds McKenzie. Now the ball to a fire. The fire clear on the touchline. It's faced by three Bradford players. A kick forward by a fire. And the referee, I think, will give a free kick to witness. Yes. For that. Tackle on a fire when he kicked the ball forward. So a last chance for witness then. Alan Tate. Now David Yu. Furbank does well to hold him up. Just 15 yards short. I would think there will probably any score anyway will be in vain for witness here they're 10 points down as we're playing now time added on for injury as Derek Pike tries to force his way through but still 15 yards short witness moving it to the left this time Barry Dowd but a good tackle from Hobbs he's had a good game for Bradford this afternoon as David Hobbs 10 yards short witness here long pass from McKenzie held well by David Yu. Kicks for the corner, but Simpson will take that just outside his own try line. And perhaps Witness's last chance has gone. Because Bradford will keep this tight as only they can. John Pendlebury. Tackled by Sorensen and Mike O'Neill. Now Hammett, he's had a good game for Bradford as well. Fists and boots start flying. David Hobbs. David Hobbs moving the ball here for Bradford. Getting the young wingman away again. Martin Afaya will chase him. Going down the line. Stepping inside. The referee, after the linesman 
held his flag up on this touchline. Said that the young wingman stepped into touch on this near side, and that will be a scrum down midway between halfway and the witness 25. Referee says get down again. Referee telling both sets of forwards they must get down again on the correct mark here for this scrummage. Two or three minutes of overtime being played here. Witness have the ball through David Yu, but has to drop on that ball. Now Sullivan, Jonathan Davis, went down. Alan Tate then trying to come round this blind side for Witness. Looking for support, finds it from Sorensen. Now Mike O'Neill. Witness with the very last chance, throwing it out to Andy Courier, but the Bradford defence getting across OK. Courier steps inside. Jonathan Davis takes a very difficult ball, offloads to Thackeray. Witness keeping the ball alive. Mike O'Neill in centre field, steps inside of Skerritt. Paul Yu, crossing there goes the whole set. Holter's gone. The ball's still loose. And there goes the Hooter. And in absolutely appalling conditions this afternoon, which suited the Bradford team down to the ground, they've taken a very short first division win here at Norton Park by 22 points to 12. A severe jolt for witness in the quest to win a second successive championship trophy, leaving them with four games left. Three in Yorkshire, Hull on Wednesday, Hull KR next Sunday, and then the home Castleford away, and then Wigan at home. But nonetheless, the five games that they had to face this morning, this looked as if it could have been one of the easier two points. That was not so. Bradford came here and spoiled the party with a superb performance, especially by their front three and the back row in the pack, giving them good support. And Bradford come away with a very good 22 points to 12 win.